Hey guys, it's Brenda from my Wee Ribbons Cradle. I'm here today with Jamie Summer. She is looking right into the camera and she looks so beautiful. Um, I'm here today to do Mandy's Cuddle Bug Nurseries tag. And she got she was inspired from a tag that we did. Um, actually from Suzanne's tag. Uh it was about what bugs you in films and I participated and one of the things that I talked about in my personal video was about a movie based on a novel and that inspired her to do a tag about books so her tag is what are your five favorite books or more now the thing with me personally is that when I was a child or a teenager I used to read a lot of leisure books and novels, but coming up into um, the high academic level of high school and university and eventually into my career field of teaching, <laughs> I had no time for leisure novel reading. My books were all about um, university books, study books, um, uh, just learning books so I had enough I had to read so many books about like for research for um, so many things I had to write at university and as a teacher you have to always continuously learn professional development training so I got away from reading novel studies However, I do have five books to share with you. And the first and foremost is a book that I always loved since I was a, a teenager, V.C. Andrews novels. And this particular one is Broken Wings. And this book is so old. I've taken very good care of it. Look how much it used to be back in the day. Eleven ninety nine Canadian, seven ninety nine USC are not this cheap anymore. I kept very good care of this book. Um, this is my favorite bookmark. I wish I would have signed it now, but this was back when I loved purple. This color here was my absolute favorite color because, um, well, also this pink. This pink is my original favorite color. But I was, it was in the late 80s, early 90s when I was in my teenage years, and baby pink was considered a baby color. So my adult favorite color was this purple. And that way I wasn't teased <laughs> or anything. Now that I'm older, of course I love baby pink. But when I was in my early 20s, I, I told everyone my favorite color is this color, which... I love this color too, but my number one favorite is light pink, but I always loved dogs too. Dogs were my absolute favorite. I used to buy magazines on different breeds of dogs. So this was my bookmark, um, but I loved V.C. Andrews books. So, um, yeah. Another thing that I loved and I still love and I still read every single day. <laughs> and this one I could be teased for. But this one is my RG books. Yes. When I eat, I don't know why when I eat lunch, supper, breakfast, um, if I'm not talking to anyone or if I like I need my mind occupied. Now, when I was younger, I used to read the back of cereal boxes, <laughs> but now it's Archie comic books. And I've kept these, I, like, look at this. This is $1.65 back in the day. See, look, I used to sign them. <laughs> this is Brenda G. That's my maiden name. Starts with a G. Um, let's see what year. I started buying my own books. Like, um, 
because I used to get, like, my mom used to buy us them every once in a while, but then I'd have to share with my brother. So this I used to buy myself. And I, I keep good care of all my belongings. Let's see. I mean, there's stains on here because, like I said, I eat. Uh, when I eat or if I'm eating chips or, like, snacks, watching TV, like, if I'm not watching TV, I need to read. I just have to. And I love Archie comic books. I still read these to this day. I'm still trying to find out the date. 1992. <laughs> I have a whole... I have tons of these magazines. And I read them over and over and over and over throughout the years. I rotate them. <laughs> Sorry. Try not to bang into the tripod. Another favorite book of mine are these... Companies Coming series. I have a whole bunch of different companies coming, but this particular one, the 150 Delicious Squares, this is a new edition. I also have the old edition, but Francis bought me this new edition because I thought I lost my other one. I eventually found it. But um, this book... Oh, there's so many delicious, delicious. And I do enjoy cooking and I do enjoy baking. But this one is my favorite. Like, all of those right there. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my goodness, so good. But yeah, the company's coming series. But this particular one, the 150 Delicious Squares, is my favorite of this series. But I have a whole bunch. So that's a third. Um, another one is, <laughs> this is me and Francis. Uh, this is a few years ago and I don't like, this is Francis' dad. Here's his dad. Here's his mom. They create books for, oh my goodness, I've never seen that before. He must make books individually for each family member. He has seven kids. Francis is the oldest, the eldest. But he's been doing this. It's tradition now. He will take our pictures and put them into a family book. And what I do is when I receive them for Christmas, I tape their, their card in the book. Uh, Merry Christmas is always a Christmas gift. It's a traditional. One year we got a calendar, but most of the time we've been getting these books. And um, so, <laughs> Mom and Dad, but it's mostly the dad. This is what he loves to do. He lo <laughs> And I love it. I cherish it. So, sorry, I'm getting emotional, but... And the only thing I don't like is his camera. It makes us look huge. <laughs> but it's like filled. See, Mo this year, though, because of COVID, he hasn't been able to sign it. But this particular one is. <laughs> uh, oh, and this is, this is a she shed that he built his wife. It's amazing. I wonder if there's a picture in here. That's Francis's sister. Uh, that's his birthday. That's Francis's birthday. Francis uh, is 49. He'll be turning 50. But yeah, this behind here is a she shed that he built. Like all on his own. This is Francis's sister and um, her kids. This is his other sister, Giselle, me, his mom, his mom is French, me and Francis, <laughs> but yeah, that's his she shed, and that's Francis's other brother, his younger brother, James, and his kids, they're twins. I wonder if there's a picture, that's his nephew, his other nephew. His other nephew and his other nephew. Oh, there's me. Horrible me. And that was uh, 
his youngest brother's new girlfriend at the time. I think they get married now. But these are some of the siblings. There's James, Giselle, and that's Giselle again. Oh, that's Marianne. No, that's Marianne. Sorry. Marianne and Giselle. <laughs> I give them mix up. They all look alike, you guys. And then <laughs> that's at the end. So that's cool. Oh, and these are some I put in the, or no, he put in these. This is his youngest brother, uh, Jonathan, and his girlfriend and her daughter. So anyways, he has a tradition to do this every year. So I love these books. These are my favorite books. And the last one. I must say is my favorite Reborn Life magazine created by Tanya and I love this one particularly because I am in it which is so cool and I always wanted to inspire others I always loved dolls I was four years old with my first memory of a little doll I loved immensely. I named her Patricia. In the 80s, the new craze hit the stores, and that was the Cabbage Patch. Oh, how I loved that doll. I was just heading into my teenage years. And my family started to comment that dolls are only for little kids. But I wanted that doll so badly. I finally got one for Christmas. I was 12. I grew up in a small community at a lake in northern Manitoba, Canada. My father worked for the government as a meteorologist. We were stationed at an airport. The community had maybe at the most 12 families. Growing up at the lake, a 25-minute drive from the nearest town, I had the backwoods as my backyard. I loved building forts, learning survival techniques, and I was a huge outdoor enthusiast. When I turned into a mid-teen, my family started commenting more and more that dolls were for little girls and I was getting shunned for owning my doll collection. I was encouraged to sell my entire Barbie collection and to donate all my dolls. I did. Oh, wow. How I wish I didn't. And I did donate all my dolls except one, my beloved Cabbage Patch. Growing older, I started to believe in that phrase, dolls are for little girls. I graduated high school with honors and attended university to obtain a Bachelor of Education. I majored with early childhood education and spent most of my career at Todd Kindergarten. Dolls were a large part of the curriculum and I loved playing dolls with my students. I eventually started a family of my own. Sorry. <clears throat> I have three sons, no daughters. As I taught and raised my sons, I was interested in how moms of young kids function in their everyday life. YouTube was starting to kick off to a popular start, and I had tons of videos of the subject. <clears throat> I began watching women's beauty routines, morning, night, and meal preparation routines. I was in my glory. One day, I decided to watch more morning routines, and so on my search, I saw a thumbnail of a baby in a crib, and it was titled, Baby's Morning Routine, A Busy Mom's Life, something like that. I clicked on it. Oh, I thought to myself, I miss my sons when they were babies. I watched with happy memories, but how come the baby seems... Wait... Sorry, uh, I watched with happy memories, but how come the baby doll seems dead? What? Is that a doll? I was so confused, but I couldn't stop watching this older teenager with this doll as if it was a real baby. Immediately, I thought, kids these days are so lucky to have such realistic dolls. Wow, if only my mom would let me use real baby items too. Watching more videos, even with a lady taking a baby to daycare, literally getting into a vehicle and driving, what? 
She's old enough to drive. She plays with dolls like this. The curiosity of these dolls were just too much. Part of me was freaked out and the other part of me was highly intrigued. I wanted to know more. Eventually, I learned that grown women of all ages collected these reborn dolls and I was actually feeling envious. I wanted one. July of 2015, I received my first reborn doll and recorded it for YouTube. My reborn doll journey has been through many phases. Different preferences I liked in the doll, phases of how small or big I wanted my collection to be, phases of how much I wanted to share with the YouTube Reborn Doll community, and phases of even being in this very unique and disfavored hobby. I wanted to see firsthand on how different artists portray the same kit. I wanted to see and own different styles of reborning techniques and also different types like full ends versus three quarter, rooted hair versus painted, dolly plates versus no plates, and my curiosity turned into an addiction. I was addicted to these beautiful works of art, addicted to the interactions I received on my YouTube channel, and addicted to the thrill of really well-presented box opening. With currently 100 plus reborns, I went through phases of wondering if my addiction was positive or negative. This hobby is not cheap. I did have funds for my hobby, of course, but I did go through thoughts of where my money could have helped my family more if I didn't spend it on myself. As I've grown with this hobby over the years and going through all these different phases, I learned and accepted that I have spent my money on myself as the most awesome way to nurture my inner child. I knew the importance of nurturing your inner child and part of the benefits of a healthy life. I accepted my extremely large collection. I accepted that I love this unique hobby that many people dislike so much. And I've accepted that nurturing my inner child is not childish. And I absolutely love myself for loving this hobby. It's not an easy journey to be in love with this hobby. There are so many people, including our own family members, that do not appreciate this hobby at all. Ridicule, mockery, antipathy, and repugnance are just some of the things that people who love this hobby have to go through. You have to realize that this hobby makes us happier within. There is something magical that happens when we pick up a doll. A natural instinct pops in. We immediately want to rock the doll, coo the doll, and best yet, the doll never cries. When a real baby cries, we can feel anxious, scared, and worried. What does this baby need? Why are they crying so long? What and oh, sometimes panic of our answers to their cries aren't working. But with the dolls, there is zero anxiety, zero worry, only peace, calm, and pure tranquility. And it's fun taking pictures of these beauties. This hobby is fun, therapeutic, calming, and the dolls are just so adorable it just melts my heart. I would never want to leave the reborn doll hobby. It's what is good for me within and the people that accept that part of me, the ones who support me, make me feel that much more worthy of accepting that part of myself. I love my dolls. <laughs> so phew, that was a long article. But here are some of the pictures that Tanya included. I can't believe she used them all. I sent her all these images and thinking, well, you choose. <laughs> but she chose all of them. Whoever said diamonds are a girl's best friend forgot about dolls. <laughs> and Frances fully supports. I am so blessed and cherished. Now my room obviously looks different now. But I love that picture. So much. Nurturing our inner child. It's one of my favorite pictures ever. It's Camprian. Here's my alternative collection. I do collect alternatives. 
Here's my Bonnie Brown collection. And I still own all these dolls. And there's my Laura Lee, Laura Lee Eagles collection. And there's me with my merch. Oh, yeah. So that, oh my goodness, that was the longest last book. But I do feel very honored that I am representative or represented in this magazine. So that is my other favorite book. Anyways, guys, this is a very long video. Um, Manny, this is so much fun. Guys, if you come up with tanks, I would love to play along. I really enjoy tanks a lot. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And Manny, it was a wonderful, fun tank. Uh, sorry I don't have any real novels anymore, but... Yeah, it's been many years since I read a novel. <laughs> so anyways, guys, have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye guys. Love you. Much hand, guys. Bye. Love you.